in the game. Two former Hull FC favourites in John Keir who coached them, Chris Chester who played for them, know exactly how passionate the fans are up in Hull. And that man Lee Radford, well, he knows he's in for a big finish. He's got a big game here and then the final game of the season is against Castleford. Phil Benfield, the man in the middle, well, he's going to have two teams going all out there to get victory tonight. Phil Benfield is the referee. We're ready to get underway. Onside. And it's a must-win game for Wakefield and Hull FC with the pressure building in the race for the top four. And here is Liam Watts, first Six. touch of the ball for Liam him. Joe. And a big cheer given his sending oh. off last time out against oh. Wigan. Still the topic of much debate. Oh, the pantomime villain, his elbows are tucked well and truly in Two. when he carried Two. that Two. ball and a big powerful Two. prop forward. Go. Scott Three. Taylor as well and Danny Howe, they've got a very good front row. But what Hull FC have talked about in the videos, Lose. in the build-up to this square. game, is about oh. controlling the middle men from Wakefield. They're the ones who lay the platform for Jacob Miller and Liam Finn. They're the people that they've got to control. Help! It's Josh Griffin, Race! four tackles oh, gone. No. And just on their own 40-metre line, Hull FC. Quickly shipped on and keeping it alive well, Sneed. And then Sneed okay, flings the ball to Steve Michaels and Michaels benefits, picked up the loose pass. Good work from Steve Michaels, another of the players who'll be leaving the club at the end of this season. Shaw nearly went without that, manages to hoist a kick. It's still on the last, it's Houghton. It's back to Shaw and Shaw skipping across the field. They're still in possession, Snead gets the pass away. And it went forward to Michaels, Paul Benton will bring them back. But ambitious from Hull in their first set in the game. Well, you said it, Bill. First minute and a half, they've shipped the ball from one side on the to the other. Look at where Michaels get this ball. He pins his ears back. Yes, He's looking for his teammate. And he double pumps the ball. He doesn't know whether to give it Albert wait, Kelly wait, wait. or just keep okay, hold of it. He Three. takes the tackle. Oh, they get to the kick. And then all of a sudden, they're just trying to pressure Wakefield. Maybe a bit more distance on that kick, though. First move. Get square. Okay, Liam. So Wakefield Liam, survive that and get their hands on the ball. And here is Craig Hubie starting Daddy. tonight. Hold. Goal, Chris two. Chester yeah, yeah. forced into one or two changes due to injury with the Keegan Hurst taken ill. Three. So Hubie coming into his starting Goal, lineup. Two plays the ball. Here is Mason Caton Brown, another player brought into the 17 because of Reese Lynn's injury. Tyler Randall. Miller. Finn now. Drops the ball off to Kerman, and Kerman up the middle. Nice. Gets the pass away, and that's good from Wakefield. Nice strong run, Randall up the middle, supporting. Looping pass, finds Finn. Gets the pass away to Arundel. And that'll be the turner, it was on the last. But both the sides showing their hand early on. Well, Brian kind of said before this game that the intensity level has risen. I think so is the no, no, skill. Up, both of up. these sides know from the very okay, start of this go. game, there is no second chance. They simply have to win. And they're playing with a pace and ferocity that is clearly evident. So, Hull bringing the ball away from virtually on their own try line after denying Wakefield. Enterprising start from uh, Trinity. Here is Watts once more. Third sending off of the Goal season that three. was against Wigan. He doesn't hold back, uh, Liam Watts. Here's Josh Griffin, and Griffin is wrestled Four. towards the sidelines. Bill Tupu doing a good job. Good oh, defence from Bill oh. Tupu. Scored that amazing try last week. Slowly making his way and establishing himself in this team, but Five. a player with Number great three. pace. And you're right, both teams oh. looking to play. If the pass is on, let's throw it. Sneed inside the 40, but that's straight down the middle of the field. And here is Bricks now. Just opts for the uh, straightforward approach, running straight into Minicello. Well, it was nice pressure on the last player from Anthony England, knowing that Marks needs the go-to man on the last players. He gets the ball away, and then you've got to be yes, sure that you aim up Wait. on Jamie Shaw. He made 134 metres last week against Wigan, just 14 carries. It was very dangerous on his kick returns. 
Caden Brown, game. keen to prove a point, brought back into the side. Three. Ball goes backwards, retrieved Four. by uh, Anthony Three. England. Lost a bit of momentum Four. there, Wakefield. Here is Finn. Back to Joe Arundel. They keep coming back to the middle section. They're trying to work those big men over. They'll go a pass or two wide and then drop a player back off inside. Extra defensive work for the big men of Hull. So Finn hoists the kick. First one up in the air. Oh, a bit of ball watching there. And that was very nearly embarrassing for Mahi Vanua. It was a brilliant kick. Absolutely brilliant because he knew the fullback wouldn't be able to have a chance to get to it. Kelly and Fanua were undecided who was the closest to it. Neither of them went for it. And this is a, a massive relief here. Look, both looking. It's yours, it's yours. No, they're lucky that it didn't land for Bill Tupu. That would have been the first try. But interestingly, Wakefield have scored 19 wait, tries wait, in, the, in these Super 8s. Ten of them have had a kick in it. Outside, Over outside. half. Now, in rugby league, it tends to be about a quarter, generally, in a speed. But recently, they've been able to score tries through a variety of different kicks that have been problematic for opponents. Bullocking run from England. Driving that ball back after the goal line dropout. So Wakefield, good positive opening set from Two. them. Move. Ashurst yes, now. Oh. Matty Ashurst has had a great season for Wakefield. Very dependable, consistent. Hubie. Oh, Finn puts the ball down and Houghton swoops on it. Oh. He'll be disappointed with himself, Liam Finn. Drops the ball clean, no one really in front of him, putting pressure on him. Nice little play as well from, from Craig Hooby. When he goes at the line, you can just see that he just has a little look up, seeing what it's in front of him, but no great pressure. Two, move Tyler. There's Liam Finn. 33 years of age now, the Irish international. Here is Albert Kelly, cleaned up at the Hull FC Awards recently, picked up Three. four awards. He's knocked that ball on though. <laughs> Just well, squirted from his grass for work, Scott. Well, he's the opportunist, isn't he, Albert Kelly? One of the most dangerous players in Super League, enjoying his time. And yet, Jacob Miller, well, there was a hand on the ball. It, it, it comes from a lateral run from Albert Kelly. He doesn't know where to go. He's running sideways, and three Wakefield defenders gobble him up, and he loses control of that ball. That's good standing in the rock, that. Keep it up. Community player of the year, among other things, uh, Albert Kelly. Heads in here. Staying for Just another season, there was talk of him heading home over. at the end of uh, this campaign, but he's staying Ouch. with Hull. It's had a great first campaign for them. Well, he made his debut, first. didn't he, at the start Three of the guys. season, round one Go against one. Wakefield Trinity. Hull managed to win on that occasion, it's been a great year so far, but they want to make sure that they Two. finish on Move a high. Back. This can't be the end of the year. Hold. Kerman, good. it's been Wakefield who've enjoyed the better of things in the opening seven minutes or so. Well, every Super League player that you talk to will say that what Wakefield are, they're a team that work hard together, but they do the basics very well. Finn just delaying the pass. Four. And that's another key component. Move. They've got yes, a good where? balance. They've got a thinker Four. in Liam Finn and Jacob Miller's a runner, although he was stopped dead in his tracks by a good defence from Hull. Oh, Hubie with a great offload. Arona gets the pass away. Randall is five, bottled up, move, but Wakefield on, showing great enterprise here oh, early on. Five. Finn swoops the pass out. Play Miller out. puts a little kick in. Play on, says the referee. The ball is scrambled dead with Tupu chasing. Shaw Hand had out. to be alive. Well, the kicking game's causing a lot of problems for Hull FC. Jacob Miller at the line, then Tupu just top hawks it through. Whenever they get near the line, you look at the offload here from Craig Ruby. he's up near the opposition's trial and he knows that if he gets his arm free he's going to have support Arona was there Randall was there Randall sniffing around the middle of the field whenever there's a break whenever there's a, a gap that opens itself he's the man that's there in support so second goal line dropout for Sneed an indication that uh, Wakefield have have had the, the better of things so far. Fast. England Move juggling in. with that one. They have, Bill, but oh. they were loose on that occasion. Oh, Jacob that's... Miller tries to trap, trap the ball with his foot and puts his front row under awful pressure when he passes it. Two. Move. Here is Daniel, Hubie now. Two tackles two. gone, about 20 metres out. Oh, Wakefield, get a quick play of the ball. Here is England once more. He's motoring early on. No, tries no, to get the it. pass away. It's six to go. <laughs> the referee will bring him back, I think. Well, Hull FC defending on the heels, 
Whenever Wakefield are carrying a the ball, they're getting over the advantage line. They're playing on the front foot. The forwards are going into contact, looking to offload the ball. They're fixing defenders. And you look at the, the mismatch there in Anthony England versus Albert Kelly. When he goes there, obviously, Griffin's got a decision to make. Does he go for Ashurst? Does he jam in and try and sort England out? Well, Chris Chester knows that the opening nine minutes of this game belong to his side. Long way to go here. So much at stake for these two sides. First, First and second places wrapped up by Counterfeit and Leeds. It's what happens behind them that is intriguing now in the, the last two. couple of rounds of these Super 8s. There's Tyler oh, Randall wearing 35. A big impact he's had since joining Wakefield from the Newcastle club. Bricks trying to run foot the whole defenders not able to do that but again they're pressing our oh, wakefield is hubie oh that looked forward to england certainly the uh, hull fans thought so you like that though when two prop forwards are promoting the ball one's in support of the other randall miller crossfield ashurst bouncing away from the first couple still going matty ashurst strong in contact ashurst he's been one of the, the standouts this year for wakefield Fifth tackle, Randall for Finn. Finn will hoist the kick to this near side. Batted back by Ben Jones Bishop. And in in the corner, are they? With Joe Arundel. Well, Phil Bentham could be passing this one on to video ref five. Ben Thaler. We've got try for checking touch, please. I don't think there's a problem with this, Bill. I don't think he's anywhere near touch for a ref from Joe Arundel. Yeah, Jack Smith uh, touches on this near side. Just concerned about the feet sliding as the, uh, he went over the line to put the ball down. Certainly no problem with uh, all players being onside at the kick. Not a problem with the challenge, just tip back. And it's just the legs that they're concerned about as he goes in. That ball's backwards off Ben Jones Bishop. He's control of the ball. Does he keep, get it down before his legs go in? Yeah, not a problem. Try will be confirmed. Quick, straightforward job for Ben Thaler, the video ref, to confirm that try for the former Hull man, Joe Arundel. He got nine tries in 18 appearances for Hull earlier in his career. Well, he's got six tries now in the colours of Wakefield Trinity. Well, they've turned up with the right attitude, and again, that man, Liam Finn. Look at the kick, absolute perfect position. Kicks the ball out wide. He knows he's got Ben Jones Bishop who times his run to perfection, makes it a contest, pats the ball down nice and easy to Joe Arundel, who scores the opening try in the first 10 minutes, has belonged to that man and his teammates. Liam Finn, an 82% success rate with his goal kicking this season. He and Mark Sneed, two of the great marksmen, and that one just shaves that post. The Wakefield getting the reward for a positive start here at the KCOM. 4-0 they lead. Well, this is something Wakefield do a lot. They kick the ball at the centre, target the centre from the opposition side, or in that centre slot there, and the winger, who's taller and can Time jump off. higher than his opposition, Ben Jones Bishop, Keep passes it back up, to Joe Rundle, but good game plan there from Trinity. Six foot two, Ben Jones Bishop. Six foot two and a bit. And he used all his height to get above Steve Michael there. Yeah. They're doing a decent job. The opening front rowers in Anthony England and Craig Hubie. They're setting the standards high. They're trying to, to get through the defensive line. Every time they carry the ball, they run into bus. Tyler Randall. Well, I think teams have clocked him pretty quickly after his opening burst against Salford when he got two tries. Yeah, he's been impressive, hasn't he? I think what Wakefield has done in the opening Four, 10 minutes and the 12 minutes of this game is have a wonderful mix of enthusiasm and confidence. And getting those two things right oh. isn't always easy. As I say, that is a first mistake. You're a, a scrappy player of the ball. The referee says you've lost possession. So this is the first time Hull will have the ball inside the opponent's half. Look, he drops the ball. Is that an incorrect play of the ball or a knock-on? Is that? Uh, he's deemed it as a knock-on in, the, in, in an attempting to play the ball. First blot on their copybook, really, for Wakefield. And they've done well this year, Wakefield, 
on the back of good completion to making sure that they do all the, the little things right in the game, like getting up, playing the ball after contact and making decent meters after contact from likes of Craig Hubie. Hull should be confident going into this one. They've beaten Wakefield home and away this season. In fact, they've won the last six since 2015 against Trinity. Wakefield really do need to uh, turn the tide here if they are to stay in contention for a top four place. Can Hull put something together? Really, their first threat on the Wakefield line. Here is Washbrook. And Kelly making a, a bit of a fumble at that one. Well, missed opportunity as well. On the third play, they had good attacking shape, just 10 metres from Wakefield's line. The games all belong to Wakefield. The field position, the lot. What's hard when you make two mistakes like that, as he has done in the opening 10 minutes or so, is not to let your head drop. You see he stops here, doesn't he? freezes. He's trying to think here, but... He's almost going to wipe that from his mind here now and continue for the next 65 minutes to play to his full potential. Obviously, hold on to the ball, but it's great when he takes on defenders and he runs at the line like he did just then. So a promising situation comes to nothing after that mistake, and Wakefield will bring the ball away. I'm sure they'll be looking to play out the percentages here. The man who made the mistake, last carry, two, Craig Hubie, attracts three. four players to him. So can't be dominated, though. He's that big and powerful. There you go. Kick on the second play. Let's get it away from our try line. Shaw goes all the way back to his own try line, and it's a chase as well. Like it built. Kick towards me, Talleyrand. Imagine he's told you're not going to play for the full 80 minutes here. At some point, Carl was going to come on. situation where a player is trying to play the ball too quick before he's really got onto his feet and collides with the, the tackler who's trying to come out of the uh, of the ruck which is entitled to do they are rattled here Hull FC that's another big player that's made I think that's his second mistake as well Mahe Fanua and players who don't normally allow external things to bother them Hull FC again defending their own line Sloppy pass, but Mason Caton Brown picks up, brings it back in field. Hull fans getting a bit restless. Scratchy start from their side. Wakefield dictating the terms. Here is Anthony England. Tyler Randall Finn shipping the ball right. Ashes, oh, big hit on Ashes, and Kelly was in there. Griffin straight underneath Ashurst. Here's Hubie. Hubie turns, gets the pass away to Miller. But Miller hounded down. It's Griffin again. The Hull fans trying to rouse their side from this lethargic start. Finn. Griggs. But Griggs is brought down by Carlos Tumavavi. Good defence from Hull this time. That's the fifth tackle. Finn will kick cross field. Can they deal with this one? And they do, and it's... Kelly who comes up with it. That's better from Hull. Well, he's a maverick, isn't he, Albert Kelly? And make sure he doesn't make a mistake here. And again, Wakefield doing it, getting up quick. Well, let's see, trying to shift the ball outside them. Michaels trying to go round Arundel, but Arundel sticks to it. He sticks to Michaels. There's the, the catch from Kelly. So... Watts now is as Hull. Good shot from Griffin. Albert Kelly over the top, and the damage was done from Griffin underneath. Houghton now, the reigning man of steel, running across the field, finds Danny Washbrook. Ever present, Washbrook. Kelly hoists the kick. Ben Jones Bishop claims that one superbly. Well, he's a big man, like Barry said before. 
He's the go-to man when he's down near the opposition's try line. He's safe as ours, he's near his own line. But now it's Hull FC's turn to turn the screws under pressure from Michaels and Tumavavi, but he takes that well. The former Hemel stag Mason Cape Brown plays the ball just inside his own 20. Old faithful for the first time tonight, ringing round the KCOM. There's a contest on here. The Hull fans know that. They anticipated that, given what's at stake for these two sides. And Wakefield trying to play the game quick. This man is dictating where they turn the ball over, Liam Finn. And there's a good chase here for this line. Shaw trying to find a way through, but three in the tackle. Hulking Stone Rovers still coming down to earth after their promotion success. Well, they've got a big game against the Catalan Dragons already in town tonight. The Dragons for that game. You can see it on Sky Sports Arena from 7.30 in the qualifiers, another qualifiers game on Saturday, 10 past three for the Widnes Vikings against the London Broncos on Sky Sports Arena again. Here's Minicello. Taylor. He's got good feet for a, for a big man, Scott Taylor. Houghton, Hull getting on a, a bit of a roll this set. Now Sneed puts a little kick in, Ben Jones Bishop takes him in the air, he takes him on the ground, Here he's going go. to take him on now, Shaw coming across, Ben Jones Bishop cuts infield, then almost went round him on the outside, great run from the wingman out of defence. Magnificent run, Ben Jones Bishop under all kinds of pressure, gets his side over the halfway line. Mason Caton Brown trying to exploit a gap in the whole defence, it wasn't there, Ellis made sure of it, but Wakefield aren't dead yet, here's Ashurst, Ashurst stands, gets the pass away to Griggs, the whole fans imploring their side to stop this. Three tackles gone. Ten metres out at Wakefield. Miller. Forward the cry, it wasn't. Kerman held just short. Four tackles gone. You'd think it was the last minutes of the game and all was at stake the way they're flinging this around. Finn puts a little grubber kick in. Miller went chase. Just too strong, was it? He's got it. Time off. I think he's got it, Bill. Four. I've got try. Jacob Miller has picked his former club's pocket with that one. He snuck round the back and dotted down that try. That's what Phil Benton record reckons. What about Ben Thaler, the video ref? Well, he's got two things to look at. First of all, on side, we can see he's clearly got both feet behind the ball. So it all comes down to what happens on that dead ball line. He's got to get the ball down before it touches any part of that line. Does he do it? Yes, he oh, does. Oh, clearly, does he? Oh. clearly. This trial will be confirmed. He's having an outstanding year, isn't he, Jacob Miller? The hands on it all the way down. That's all he's looking for there, Ben Thaler, making sure he retains possession and there's no gap. Jacob Miller, who joined Hull as a 20-year-old, and made 24 appearances for the club before leaving and seeking success elsewhere. Well, he's come up with his ninth try of the season. We can trace this all the way back to Ben Jones Bishop, handling that kick under pressure, making all those metres, taking the tackle, doesn't panic, doesn't try and find a pass to potentially score. And from that field position, another kick, Liam Finn trusts his half-back partner and... Holy moly, how does he get to that ball and keep it in field? Well, he's having an absolute field day, isn't he, Liam Finn? Setting up that try for Jacob Miller, right on the plate. Well, you're going to see him going to convert this here for two more points using his right foot, swinging his right leg. When you think back at that try, he's kicked it, one of the most accurate kicks we'll see with his left foot. That is a very skillful player. As the ball comes through to me, he's got a limited amount of time, he drops it gently, inviting his co-halfback there, Jacob Miller, to go through and score. And I said before the game, they've made themselves the best team. Some disappointing faces for Hull. Wait for the now, the best team at scoring from kicks. We know how important every coach talks after the match about the kicking game. Well, Wakefield are making sure they capitalise on their kicks. Wakefield just looking sharper and more alert, and that was evidence of it. Miller was just alive to the situation and caught Hull napping there.
Well, the message will be coming down from Lee Radford. You've got to get in the face. You've got to make sure you're closing down Liam Finn. Any time that they're 20 metres from our line, we've got to make sure we're on red alert. They're not doing that, and they're the only 21 minutes of the Sorry. game. The danger is that's where Scott Griggs comes into his own. Lee Radford, he has a glum face. We're just into the second quarter of this game. Plenty of time still to go, but Hull have failed to get a foothold in this game in the opening 20 odd minutes, 22 minutes. It's been all Wakefield, that's for sure, and they've got the points to illustrate that. The four of them coming from that man, Jacob Miller. Courtesy of that man, Liam Finn, who hoists that kick for Michaels, and Michaels immediately pounced on by the chasing Trinity players. Oh, Billy had to be good. When that ball went up, his legs were wobbling underneath him. There was three men chasing hard. As soon as he catches it, he knows he's got to, to go to ground as quick as possible. Here's a man with his efforts in his carries. Sometimes he's earned his side penalties with, again, his, his efforts to get up and play the ball. Not on that occasion, though. Josh Bowden is off the bench with the instructions to G things up. With the instructions of making sure you put a dent in your position's line. The defence has been very good for Wakefield, stopping some of the bigger fellas in the tracks. Kelly thumps the kick down street, downfield straight into the uh, hands of Ben Jones Bishop. First, move Carlos. So Hull can't get any traction in this game. I think they've had one threatening moment in in Wakefield's twenty, Two. and then that was when Albert Kelly Move. dropped the ball, Josh wasn't it? On the third Wait. plate. So not Go building to. enough pressure near Wakefield's line. Move. Mason Caton Brown on the 40 meter line in the whole half. And Wakefield able to, to move this ball. Move. Get square. With comparative ease, Ashurst plays that one. Here is Fafita off the bench now. Lively character David Fafita having great banter with the Saints fans last week during that game at the Beaumont Legal Stadium in Wakefield. Griggs puts a, a little kick in, this time Shaw is able to gather that one. Well, there's evidence of all the different options that Wakefield have got. It was Scott Griggs' kick, not a spectacular kick, but the Trinity side now trying to apply some pressure while defending. Well, Wakefield must be fancying their chances because their five matches in the Super League have gone one, uh, sorry, lost one, lost one, lost. So this surely is going to be a win if they carry on with that. But they've conceded the penalty. I think that's the first of the game. Well, Danny Kerman's in that tackle. He's in that rut. You can see his hand over the arm. Stroke ball, Scott Taylor. He's at the wrong side of the play of the ball, and Danny Kerman, he's trying to buy his side a, a second or two, but unfortunately, field position for left C now. Great kick, and Wakefield right back on their own try line now. This is a good opportunity for the black and whites. Josh Bowden reversing towards those Wakefield posts. Sneed. Oh, Kelly puts it down. It's still loose, and it'll be the first knock-on. First knock-on. Backwards off Hull. Oh. First knock-on was off Wakefield, I think. That's right. That's right. Went backwards off Albert Kelly, and knock on the ground there. Well, Hull FC will get more possession in field position. Albert Kelly is just snatching at the ball. It's a little bit behind him again. He'll have an influence on this game, I'm sure. That's the first knock-on. Jacob Miller, that's the reason Hull FC get head and feed. Wakefield disputing that one with referee Phil Bentham and the Wakefield fans in uh, that corner of the ground not impressed with that decision, but it went backwards from Kelly. Well, this is a worry, is it? Tyler Randall there with a potential knee or hamstring injury. Game yeah, stopped here. Full started with that tap on the uh, well, 10 metres from the Wakefield line and the, the passing accuracy didn't really trouble what Wakefield they're, they're fully rested here now for six to go and he looks like he's ready to go Chris Chester and John yeah, Keir seen it all 
hole with head and feed at the scrum. Here is Minicello. Shawl steps past the first line of defence. He's held, cries the referee. Finn clinging on. Sneed. Here is Gareth Ellis, hoping for a glorious end to a glorious career with an Old Trafford appearance next month. But Hull have got some work to do if that is to come to be. Here is Minicello. About five metres out, a hole now. Houghton, Taylor with the run around. Houghton again. Kelly, short pass finds Washbrook. Forward by the Wakefield fans. It was right under their noses. And he's held up. That's the best the referee can offer. Well, Tia Camilla's just got to get on with his job there and stop Danny Washbrook from from getting over the trial, and he was turned around and he's having a go at the referee. Well, here come Hull once more, and Kelly for Ellis once more. Kerman with the tackle and shoves the former Wakefield man Ellis back to the ground. So Sneed will kick cross field. Fanua will challenge. Marcus Fanua will redeem himself with that try. But again, it's going to be one for the video ref. Not try. Phil Bentham side. reckons it's a try. Just wants to check the onside. I think everything's fine with the challenge in the air. It looks like it's fine with the uh, the onside kick. You can see touch judge is just in front of the play there, which is probably why they're checking the uh, the onside. But nothing wrong with the challenge. Both competing for the ball. Benua just stronger. I don't think there's an issue with the grounding. Puts it down okay. And there it is. Try confirm. Mahe Fanua making his farewell appearance at the KCOM Stadium before he goes back to the NRL and wanting to make it a big farewell when he's got Hull's first points of the game with a strong finish. Great catch. And then he had the strength. You can see they get another set of six here. That ball goes backwards. Wakefield are trying to get the ball back, but Jacob Miller makes a play, knocks the ball forward, and we've waxed lyrical about Liam Finn and he's kicking it. What about that man, Mark Sneed? And that combination has worked over the last couple of years. And Mahe Fanua, well, he's going to be difficult to replace. So powerful. When he goes up for that ball, there's only going to be him that's coming down with it. So committed. Well, the left seat back in the game. Most teams have got good kickers. He's one of the best here, isn't it? The best at goal kicking so far this season from the sideline. The supporters need a special sneed right now. Yeah, good kicking out of hand, good kicking off the tee. <laughs> Mark Sneed, even with the aid of a bit of woodwork or metal work. And Hull are in business. Hull FC 6, Wakefield Trinity 10. I I'd credit the kick, but. I can't take away from Mahe Fanua's contribution to this team since he joined the club. That's a spectacular take. He lands on one leg, never looks like losing his balance, and gets that try. He's a great player that will be sadly missed by the game, as well as Hull FC. He's bowing out, though, with a good runner scoring. He got two tries against Wigan last week in that uh, defeat. So on the scoreboard here tonight, that'll... Steady hold down, settle their supporters' anxieties. Minicello. Well, these are the problems. The penalty that they previously conceded, it wasn't necessarily the knock on by Jacob Miller, who were already at that part of the field. But if Wakefield concede more penalties here, they kick the ball down, and again, they're going to have to defend or attempt to defend the sneak kick for the Fanua catch. So another penalty puts Wakefield on the back foot. Minicello. About 20 metres out, here is Scott Taylor. Anakin trying to stop his progress. That takes some doing. Fafita is there eventually. Houghton, little change of direction from him. Sneed, but harassed by his opposite number, Finn. But then keeps the ball alive, and Kelly puts that one down. Free play. Griggs belts it downfield for Ben Jones Bishop to play. But that's going to find touch. Well, that was a difficult ball to take. 
at the line. It is a very advanced skill, catching a ball at pace with defenders around you. And unfortunately, <clears throat> the mistake is made. Six passing, sorry, seven passing to six. And good defensive pressure from Wakefield gets a result. Frustrating evening so far for Albert Kelly. But it's been a good season as far as he's concerned in the colours of the black and whites. Joint top try scorer with 19 so far. Well, he knows, and the rest of his team know. They've had the ball 13 times in half an hour. On five occasions, they've dropped it, similar to what we just saw there. And that's, that's too high a number here to give yourselves a chance of progressing through to the playoffs. Good work defensively from Hull. They seem to have up their efforts, haven't they? In the last 10 minutes, all FC. Knowing that Wakefield were well and truly on top in all departments. Seem to have gone into the stride now. Here is Chris Anakin. Coming off the bench where he normally comes from, Anakin. Fafita now. And here's Matty Ashurst. Ashurst, good handoff, puts Sir Kelly on the ground. Fafita now barges away from Bowden. Bowden comes back to bring him down. That's the fifth tackle. Finn. Finn hoists that one towards Steve Michael's wing. And Michaels claims it. Great take. Oh, and almost stolen from his grasp by Joe Arundel. A car good on now for Wakefield to get up the speed in the middle of the field. Well, this is interesting here now. The whole coach, Steve Ralph, has decided they need to do something different. Very rarely do we see three fresh players come on at the same time, but that's exactly what Hull have done now. With just less than 10 to go, his team need a boost. Here is Josh Griffin trying to burst through, taking that pass from Kelly. Griffin, another of the ex-Wakefield contingent in this whole side. Stray pass from Watts, but Sneed is able to gather, then put a teasing kick in into open space, but Grix comes across to cover. He mixes his kicking game up, doesn't he, Mark Sneed, and putting pressure on the Scott Grix at the back. Wakefield has to bring this ball back out from near the trial line when there's so many fresh middlemen on now for Hull FC. He'll be looking at getting off the line, whacking in numbers. Is Bill Tupu now just over the half hour mark here? Here's Mason Caton Brown, great pace on this guy. If they give him an opportunity, here is Kyle Wood, he's got pace as well, he's got a good sidestep. Well, he looked up on the open side, there was nothing on, so he goes himself on the short side. Ashurst, Miller, Finn, and Finn hoists again. This one's a bit deeper towards those posts. And Shaw watches that one bounce and then brings it back. And Caton, uh, Tupu is there to make the tackle. Well, when those kicks go up from Lee and Finn on the final play, you know that you've got to get on your bike, you've got to get down there. As I said before, Jamie Shaw's very good at bringing the ball back, as is this man. He's got a big appetite for work, Lee and Watts. He gets back, helps his outside backs, brings the ball forward. He should Over be the... fresh. Sorry, Barry, go on. He should be fresh, Liam Watts didn't play too much part last week and determined, I think, knowing him as a character, he'll be determined to make up. It's the reason he looks busy. So Sneed launches a kick deep downfield and Grix gathers that one. Mason Caton Brown. Jordan Thompson. And Josh Bowden doing the tackling. Here is Bill Tupu now. They've got some pace out there at uh, Wakefield. We saw Two. Tupu showing that against oh. St. Helens last week. Caton Brown as well. You'd say that's the favourite side. They like going to the left-hand side on any long shifts. Even when they set up in the centre, they still like to go out there. Tupu's definitely a dangerous player. Give the ball to him. Lots of things can happen. Again, nice shot from Ooh. Fash. Is it underneath? He ends up on his knees there, Brad Fash. I might see this this tackle again. Dangerous position. He gets down low. He's a big man, England. So he gets down low. Ends up on his knees almost. Yeah. 
Not great technique. Brad Fasher, good young forward. Difficult penalty, but... Well, his, his, his hips end up higher than his head, and that's what the referee will be looking at. It's a dangerous position, yeah. and that's why the penalty is being given. Here is Fafita now, Fafita just barging his way to the line. He's over the line, he's almost over the dead ball line. Oh, the ball is Fafita, he's, he's got that down, has he? Now then, credit my head to Bill, no, no, no try. Excellent work. What do you think James Shaw was thinking when Fafita's brought through the line? Oh, come on, lads, help me out, help he's me thinking, out. He's thinking, we're getting the touching goal. Nobody will think this. They're no, actually no, taking no, no, over the touch-in goal line here. And that's the very best reason why the ball starts out there. That's an amazing effort. Very smart as well to, to use the draw to get him. And a try saved. One. Move. It's a let-off for the whole team. They did well to survive there because Fafita had broken the line. Two. I'm sure Jamie Shaw Move. just closes his eyes there and waits for his teammates and comes from the wingman. Is that, for is that dragon? Well, Fanua was in a dragging position and perhaps held at that point. Minicello, Houghton is quickly there, quick play the ball. Nice line at the back behind the play the ball from Watts. Watts just flings that pass away to Brad Fash, Hull's Young Player of the Year, 2017. Move, go away! Finn upending the youngster. The game going from one end to the other is... It's played out, it comes back to Sneed, and Sneed keeps it alive. Well, he got six to go, in fact. Here's Jordan Thompson. First, move! So, fantastic oh, position for Hull with half-time approaching. Bowden now, again reversing. He likes that reverse gear, does Josh there. Bowden. Two, move! Just oh, a couple of metres away two. from the line, Houghton. Oh, Kelly juggling with it again. Thompson. And Thompson's lost that ball. Mason Caton Brown was away. The Wetfield fans not happy there. They thought play on was an option. And it would have been an all on for Hull to catch Mason Caton Brown when he got into full speed then. Why? Well, such as on the far side is called zero, and uh, Phil Benson's called a knock on. He did say, and he's absolutely correct, that the uh, ball-carrying arm had touched the ground, so therefore the uh, tackle was complete. And that would be why he couldn't carry on from that. If he, if he knocks the ball on before the tackle's complete, then we can play on. But you can see there, the ball-carrying arm has hit the ground, then it comes out. Thank you, Stuart. I was just about to say that then, Bill. <laughs> just as he hit the ground, the ball came That's a let-off. That is a let-off, because as Phil said, Mason Caton Brown would have been gone there. I don't think there was anybody who could have caught him. Oh, Lee Radford, you can see the frustration on him. Oh, but Kelly, a couple of times when the ball's gone to him, he's juggling with it and he's not getting any clean catches. There's not so much wrong with the, the passes in front of him. Bit of a hold-up. As we wait for the uh, the scrum to form. I think if the score stayed the same, Bill, I think Hull would be happy at half-time because they've played so poorly. But to just be four points behind would give him a chance, perhaps, to... To, to address their problems, try to rectify them, know that they've got to score more than the more than a try than the uh, the opposition in the second half to First make move. sure that this season does have a happy ending. Here's Kyle Woods, Danny Kerman now. Kerman is quickly closed down move. by his opposite number, oh. Mark Minicello. Anakin, Fash. Three. Move. Well, the ball carrier there needs some support. Hold. Nice and tight, Hull FC. Again, getting up in the line, over the line. A couple of lead players go through for Wakefield. Tupu and Tupu away from Kelly. Tupu with one man to beat. Ball back in field for Miller, and Miller is brought down. Good covering work by Shaw. Shaw is penalised. Surely he's going to the bin. And there's a player down in back play as well, I think, taken out off the ball. Well, that's the reason why they go to that left Time edge. Off. Bill Tupu breaks free, that. puts that man under pressure. He's trying to slow the player down, which will allow his teammates to get back. But when he gets this ball, nice play from the forwards. Out the back, out the back. Tupu goes into contact, gets rid of Kelly, gives the ball to Jacob Miller. Nice play, nice support. Albert Kelly is the second man in. He's been constantly targeted. He's done more defence in the first half than any other back on the pitch. And Bill Tupu 
and the players around him are making him work, and that's the reason he doesn't look as effective Which player? when he's got the ball. Did Liam Watts push up, take somebody out of them? Was it I think Liam it was Watts? accidental contact. He's in the sim bin for 10 minutes. Yeah. Before the game, we looked at some of the long-range tries that Wakefield scored. They've got speed and they've got a, w a willingness to attack from within their own half. This is against the side that won the Challenge Cup. But they've got the confidence, haven't they, with just two minutes less than that now to half-time to attack from deep. Penalty goal here. They want the two points. The, side, the opposition's just been reduced to 12. Would you not try and capitalise on that? I think probably go for two points. Half-time approach in your six-point lead. I think it's the correct decision, Bill. They've been a believer in kicking penalty goals over recent weeks. They did it regularly at Salford. They did it or attempted to do it against St. Helens last week. Do you remember the late attempted penalty? So they think their philosophy is penalty goals can help us to win and get into the top four. Saw point that penalty with Wakefield, the Liam Finn one that hit the uh, the post. Another one that missed. For this to extend Wakefield's lead as half time approaches. And Finn, as is usual, is on target. That's 89 goals for the season. And Chris Chester, well, it. It's a pretty impressive first half performance from his side. It's been a, a very good performance. The fans are getting behind them. The opening 20 minutes certainly belonged to Chris Chester and his side. That man in particular was dictating the play. Time off. Jamie Shaw now. Well, he's got another nine minutes into the second half before he'll be back on the field. So Hull with 12 on the field. And for Fita making hay again. The man he's picked out, Albert Kelly, straight away. He veered towards him where he was defending. Run at one of the smaller men instead of Two. some of the bigger men in the middle. Square. Bill, we saw a picture of Chris Chester, and I was trying to look up and try and think what's going through his mind. He looks like a man whose team are doing exactly what they practiced in the week. That doesn't happen so many times Three. for coaches. Move. Home, a rundle. They were trying to get him into uh, touch, but he managed to stay in the field of play. Kerman now. Four tackles gone. That's the last, in fact, of the first 40 minutes. A 40 minutes which has belonged largely to Wakefield Trinity and Lee Radford. We'll head down to the dressing room here at the KCOM with a bit of work to do on his side. They've been, for most of this first half, second best in this game. And their top four hopes hinge, possibly, on the next 40 minutes. As to Wakefield's, so much at stake in this game. And Wakefield, at the moment, are showing more urgency and getting the reward to show for it. Performance in the first 40 minutes. Lee Radford is catching his breath after legging it upstairs from the dressing rooms far below. Well, he'll be looking for better from his side in the second half. Remember, both these sides still with work to do to ensure a top four finish. They wouldn't be completely out of the reckoning if they lost here tonight, but it would be a major setback and would leave, their, leave them needing results elsewhere, elsewhere to go in their favour as Sneed gets the second half underway. And Wakefield will be looking to continue the outstanding performance they put in in the first 40 minutes. Held! Well, they'll be looking for a big start again. They started the game well for the opening 20 minutes. They absolutely dominated it. Hull FC probably made 35 tackles more than them in that, in that time. Move! Four breaks by Wakefield in the first half, eight attacking kicks, that's been the difference. All orchestrated by Liam Finn, who's just playing behind. A team that's going forward, getting to the kick, Release. doing the basics well. And he's having a field there, that man. And Hull with their fullback, Jamie Shaw, in the sin bin for the opening nine minutes, probably, of this eight minutes, certainly of this uh, second half, with extra work to do. A man down against a side who's shown their willingness to shift the ball. Anakin plays the ball. Finn hoists 
the kick. And it's Sneed coming from fullback who's put it down. But they were offside with the Wakefield chasers in their enthusiasm, and that is a massive, massive let off for Hull. Well, Mark Sneed, during his time at Salford and as a junior player, played a little bit of fullback, but he was some way off that kick. It was a swirling kicking, oh, sorry, a swirling kick that had him grasping. Lee Radford is trying to make do amends for the time. His fullback is off the pitch. Well, the tables turned immediately with that penalty and the kick pushing Wakefield back downfield. And Hull, 20 metres out. Here is uh, Kelly. Kelly's short pass finds Griffin. Griffin strong running. And taking Hull closer to that Trinity try line. Watts juggling with it, gets the pass away to Kelly. Kelly on to uh, Sneed. Sneed's kick, though, is fielded by Grix. And Grix goes down under the tackle from Mark Sneed. A chance to get the half time news. Let's go down to the sideline and join Angela Powers. Well, as you can imagine, Billy, it's been contrasting comments from the two half, the two coaches at halftime. Lee Radford said that first 30 minutes were just horrible. It took them that long to catch up and then compete with the Wakefield Trinity. This half, he wants to see them go set for set with the opposition, especially with a man down. They really need to just match them man for man. Chris Chester pleased with this, but he, he says we've been in this position. Man Punty does. I'll hand back to you. It looks like they might be just challenging here then. Here's a rundle, a rundle. Swats aside the first, coming back in field, Joe Arundel, and almost away from the tackle of Mahe Fanua, who manages to keep a hold of him. Arundel keeps a hold of uh, Fanua. Finn, they haven't finished yet, but that's a stray pass. Mason Caton Brown picks it up, skips in field. Across comes Brad Fash to make the tackle. That's the fifth. Down the short side. Oh, and Briggs can't find Bill Tupu with the pass. And Kelly brings it away for Hull, who can counter now. Brilliant play. What about the footwork there to get into that, that space? He's, he's, he's balanced. Vision almost had eyes in the back of his head, didn't he, Albert Kelly, there, to see how he had to get out of the, that tight corner that the opposition had them trapped in. The great you play from Wakefield to get down that end of the field just goes to show they're a quality side. Uh, that was a chance gone begging for Wakefield. But I, I think they've missed the missed the chance there because Scott Griggs was pushing up centre field, calling for the ball to be just kicked in, dabbed in behind the line. They've definitely missed an opportunity then. Here is Brad Fash. Up to the halfway line. And he plays the ball and Houghton goes on a run. Anakin, the crowd appealing for a penalty. Bowden. Josh Bowden. Went back for more there. I thought he was going to offload. He turned around and had another go. They're looking to ride that tackle as they go short side here with Griffin. Josh Griffin has shown up well early in this second half. That's the fifth. Kelly finds Sneed and Sneed time to hoist the kick. Ben Jones Bishop, though, able to gather that ball and driven over the try line. Well, that's the second best result from the kick like that. Those two players, Ben Jones Bishop and Steve Michaels, having a good old ding-dong over there on that far side away from us. And the Carlos Tumabavi catches the player, pushes him over the dead ball line. Wakefield did a magnificent job of finding space on the outside with that extra man. Here's the supporting player. Should that pass have gone or not? Kyle Wood, first of all. Arundel is trying to find a clean pass and fails to do so. Well, Scott Griggs looks to, to pass the ball out wide to Tupu, but it was from the play in centre field where they should have kicked it behind because nobody there. Scott Griggs was the only man calling for it. Rafash drives that ball back. What strong Move. run from the whole prop. Here is Bowden. And Bowden. Three, as move. ever, showing up well, coming off the bench. What's once more? Kelly, Carlos Twimavave. Twimavave trying to go on the outside. Move. Did well to stay in, then he was under a lot of pressure from Rundle and Ben Jones Bishop. And it's shallow. The, the kick comes in from Kelly. And it's fielded by Miller. Move. 
Well, first of all, when that kick was put through, you thought, yeah, Danny Alton's onto this, but then it looked like a, a laboured chase. Maybe it was because the positioning from Griggs at the back. It's almost as if Wakefield are going to sweep a system, though. Whoever kicks for Wakefield, it's their job to clean up when the opposition are going to kick it. Well, in that case, it was Miller. Griggs wasn't far off on a previous play. The, the Miller, Finn and, uh, and Griggs are very often putting themselves in the perfect position for the dangerous kicks that we've seen from Hull this season. Two could lovely offload to Griggs. Wakefield looking to keep this ball alive, looking to try and make the most of this numerical advantage they've got at the moment. Here is Anakin. Wakefield fans appealing for a penalty on their man. Finn, little kick, it was played at, says the referee. And Steve Michaels can't keep it in. Wakefield get head and feed. Well, they get head and feed, and I think you can trace that back to David Fafita's run. And again, that's the pressure that you need to put on Liam Finn. Don't just let him sit back. He likes to stand nice and deep from the rook. Kicks again, goes at the defensive line, tries to bring them up, but the pressure is on from the inside. But Fafita, he goes forward, look at this. Gets rid of defenders, keeps going, gets up quick. It's a quick play, the ball, and all of a sudden, Tupu, he goes, he makes metres, everything's going forward. Playing into the hands of what Liam Finn's trying to do. Numbers pushing up in support, support the ball carrier, get to the space. Some good reaction in the rock, keep it up. Hull won their opening two Super 8 games Second against Salford and at St Helens, but then they've lost three in a row. Here. A fourth consecutive Out. Super 8 defeat could see them put their top four hopes in jeopardy. St Helens lurking. Wood has lost the ball. Kyle Wood and Chris Chester can't believe it. Normally dependable. Was thinking of glory then, maybe. Oh, he's aged a bit then, and just in that play, Chris Chester, yet he looks up, you can see as soon as he goes in, there's a defender left on the ground. So when there's a defender left on the ground, the man who's going behind is going to pick it up and attack. Unfortunately, he drops the ball. Let's have a look at the table as it stands with this scoreline at the moment. Wakefield into third, Hull will drop into fifth. And Wigan, yet to play in fourth that's the table as it stands that's the significance of a wakefield win here but they've got work to do They're having us a big game for wakefield next week they take on wigan as i said earlier on Hull FC have got Castleford, so two big games for these two teams next weekend as well. Well, Hull will be happy to back down to 13 players. Jamie Shaw returns to the field. And I'm trying to look out there. I'm not sure whether we've seen Jake Connor on the field. He has created more tries for Hull than any other Hull player this season, and he hasn't had that long on the field. So if they need something special, might not be that long before we see, before we see Connor on the field. Who would you take off, Phil? Oh, here comes Sneed. Sneed with the break. Sneed all the way. Mark Sneed. Gets that ball down, or did he? The referee is not convinced. Sneed trying to bash that ball on the ground. Phil Benjamin reckons it is. And ben Thaler, not a what's problem. the decision? Not a problem, Bill. Well, there's one man who won't be taking off, and that's Mike Sneed. Well, does he keep possession to get the ball on the ground? Certainly a great effort by Kate Brown to keep him up. But the tackle's still going. And still keep rolling over. Yes. The That's a great finish, Mark Sneed, with players. This is Kate Brown all over him. 20 metre break. The on field decision is a try. He's got to retain possession of that ball, keep his hand on the ball all the time. Doesn't matter that he comes away from the body a little bit. Step up in tight games and Mike Sneed. Well, he's been outstanding over the last couple of years, hasn't he? This is a try. Phil Bentham, the referee's instincts surely were right. All fans waiting for the call. A try it is for Mark Sneed. He doesn't just kick goals, he can score tries. Criticism levelled at him in some quarters that that is a 
facet of his game is missing. It's not here. Well, again, when they go wide here, you can see the sneak. He likes to run the ball a lot more this year. Everyone just said that he was a he was a kicker. He takes on the lines. He has got an excellent kicking game. He's one of the best in the competition. But he's show and go. His strength when he goes through, he's not the biggest, but he's just holding that ball to perfection. Picks out his opposite in Finn, who positions himself on the, the outside of him. He breaks free, and then as soon as he gets free from that tackle, he backs himself. I think Liam Finn, when he watches that again, will be disappointed with his effort. He's had a phenomenal 48 minutes or so, especially with his kicking game, but failed on his assignment against his opposite. So Sneed to convert his own try. Bang on targets. We're going to try and three goals in the defeat by Wigan last week. But he's going to try and two goals now tonight. Mason Cape Brown did his best. Well, they needed something, didn't they? They needed a lift. The supporters needed a lift. And it came in the form of a brilliant try work. We've not seen many of those we've taken on. Beat one half back, ready the fullback. Got his side back level. Well, it's. It looks like you've got your wish, Phil. Jake Connor is on. I'm trying to work out who he's come on for. It looks like he's going to play right centre the yeah. way he's standing just inside Maya Fanua. That was Josh Griffin. And I agree, by the way, he's such a, a talented rugby player. It's just difficult when a player who is versatile like that, you're almost waiting for an injury to get him on. Three, move on to me. So the scores are level. Hull 12, Wakefield 12. Half an hour to go at the KCOM. Here is Liam Watts. He's had a big game, Liam Watts, hasn't he? When it's been time to carry the ball, he's carried it. He's also gone at the line, tipped it on to his teammates. Sneed places that kick well right down the middle of the field. And here is Mason Cape Brown. Really did try his, uh, his best to deny Sneed there, but he was on his own. Well, in a nice line in defence. They're in a tough period here now, Wakefield. Obviously, Hull FC can sense something. The way that they're working together, they're hitting, they're sticking, they're defending a mistake every time they do make a mistake. As Ben John Fisher runs into a brick wall and Josh Bowden. England. Strong run from him. Kyle Wood. It's James Hassan off the bench. Miller hoists that kick. Shaw out of the sin bin underneath that one. Surrender! James nice. Shaw's missed only two games this season. And a really solid campaign. Had a good couple of years, hasn't he, Jamie Shaw? Been outstanding. When he gets the ball, anything can happen, and he's not afraid as well to go into the heart of the defence. Pick on some of the bigger blocks. That's his pet play after Maia Fenua. Pick up and go. There's another good couple of carries off the back of that. Look at the metres he'd made. Yeah, Hull rolling forward here. Then what's Kelly? Kelly wrestled to the ground. Finn and Kerman doing the tackling for Wakefield. They're on the receiving end now. They've dictated the action for a long time in this game, but Kate Brown deals well with that kick. Well, he positions himself well. The ball was going end over end. Kate Brown knew that he had to get one foot in the end goal earlier, catch it on the front, then they can tap the ball on the 20. And then the other wingman, uh, Ben Jones Bishop, gets involved. Well, early on, Wakefield had a lot of joy when they were shifting the ball from one side of the field to the other, making the bigger forwards move from one side to the other, keep chasing that game away, take some energy out of them. Good tackle, good line speed. But you can see the likes of Liam Watts, if, if you're not making him move and the ball's nice and in front of him, it's going to be easy, he's going to lap that up. Miller. Goal! Oh, Chris meets Mahe oh, Fanua. Fanua is concerned about the uh, Wakefield fullback. Oh, but Grix is back on his field, feet. Is there any more bigger insult in the game of rugby league? You absolutely clean the clocks of somebody, and then the blow that's done it says, Are you alright, mate? He's just apologised again. He's apologised twice for hitting Grix. Look at this. Gets him in his target. Bang! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Have a bit of that, Grixie. <laughs> Zero. 
Scott Griggs has been around long enough, 33 years of, uh, of age. <laughs> and he can take all the bumps as well, both in terms of getting whacked about the pitch and some of that stuff were, that was unfairly and ju unjustly thrown at him last week. This game's now at a fascinating point, isn't it? And in fact, it's a fascinating point for the season, really, both these sides. 12 all. Oh, oh Houghton with the run. Houghton is clean through. Tried to get the pass away. He's still not tackled. He is now by, by Griggs. But Hull FC raising the game here. Sneed puts the kick in. And Wayfield gladly pounce on the loose ball. Oh, if he has his time again, look, he's apologising to his teammates. Third player, he kicks the ball through in the first half. He did exactly the same, but it was over on the other side. A little rush of blood, maybe. Well, that's a look at the scoreboards. 12 apiece. Which team believe that they're going to go on and win? Wayfield have been phenomenal all year. Talking about them making the playoffs, making the semis. Oh, did they make a mistake here? Well, let's see one of the big guns in Super League. Well, they certainly think that they've got the players to get to the semis and win the last two games. Mistake by Tinaral Arona that allows Hull to get back on the attack. Well, just a simple drop, wasn't it? I think was he trying to offload and didn't realise which way he was facing. 20 metre line then. Fash plays the ball. Sneed, short pass from him and Minicello trying to break free from Finn, but they come across to cover him to the Wakefield players and manage to stop his progress. QB wrestling with him, could have been penalised. Here is Watts now. Watts has good hands, does the uh, the big front rower. To Mavave, drifting across the field. Then to Washbrook. Washbrook delays the pass. Connor, quick hands from him. Mason Caton Brown bats it down. It'll be head and feed to Hull FC at this scrum, Wait, surely. Yeah, I'm sure you're right, Bill. Well, Danny Washburn, I think it is, isn't it? Who nervously throws the pass. He knows this player outside him. It's knocked down, isn't it? In fact, sorry, Jake Connor throws the last pass with Mason Caton Brown getting his hand to the ball. Well, I think when Danny Washburn gets his ball, he double pumps the ball because he's after Jake Connor coming tight on his shoulder. He's trying to create the gap. He's got the defenders interested. A nice little tip on player there, if Jake Connor hit that line, hit the ball at speed. Time off with an injury. Jake Connor's had a, a good first season with the Hull FC since coming to the club from Huddersfield. Big move for him. Could be hoping that there's nothing, nothing wrong with Jacob Miller. Nervous. Chris Chester, said before, a former Hull FC player. Miller back on his feet. Right, Felt like a timeout, that. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's anything other than a timeout. Somebody's hit the clock there and said, we'll have a rest. Scrum forms. Hull's head and feed, 20-metre line. Sneed, hands ready to receive the pass. Shaw looks left. Then comes back, tries to find a gap. Tinarau Arona makes the tackle with Kyle Woods. Bowden. Two, Mancini, goal line, get on the line. Arona all over him. Sneed, Kelly, short pass from Kelly Washburn. The referee hasn't awarded it. Tackle two. I've got to try. He reckons it's a try, and it's his obstruction in the build-up to that that might be the issue. But Danny Washbrook, who wasn't on the original team sheet until Sikamanu pulled out, as he put Hull in front. Well, they've certainly got uh, a few players in motion. Where does the lead runner go? Does he interfere? Well, there's certainly uh, some contact, slight contact there, which uh, brings Miller in on the other side. So it's Liam Watts we're looking at, the big tall number 10. He runs at Matty Ashurst, the number 11 for Wakefield. Does he interfere with Ashurst? There's he contact, just, as you know, say. Is there enough contact for you to stumble. chalk it off? Well, it makes him stumble, which uh, stops him moving across to fill the gap. So Jacob Miller's got to come in on the other side, hasn't he? He's in the defensive line, and he's made contact with him. I think that's obstruction. 
the way that uh, the protocols are written, there's contact made in the defensive line, and that stopped Ashurst getting across to Albert Kelly, which affects the defence outside that. So if I'm making that decision, I'm saying no try. There's just a little stumble, isn't there, from Ashurst? I, I, I agree with you, Stuart. The Wakefield players sensing that this is going to go their way. They've already advanced from the try line. And Liam Watts just a, a stride it was. That's all it was. And if Liam Watts doesn't make contact here, Albert Kelly does exactly what he's supposed to do. And so does Danny Washbrook. I said before about Danny Washbrook trying to get Jake Connor free. That's exactly what Danny Washbrook did. He led the way. He showed exactly what he wants close to the line. Just pick a good line and let the man who's carrying the ball find you. Danny Washbrook denied to two years ago. He was a try scorer for Wakefield in the million pound game against Bradford. He knows all about the drama at this stage of the season, hoping there to have put Hull in front, but not to be. We are still all square. Coming up to the hour mark. And talking of the million pound game, it's not far away now. Saturday, September the 30th, two weeks Four. this Saturday, 2.30 Sky Sports Arena. Who will it be? Not the one you want to be involved in. And Catalan will be hoping to do their hopes of uh, avoiding that. A power of good when they meet Hull Kingston Rovers up the road tomorrow night. A game you can see on Sky Sports. It is all happening. Witness London on Saturday as Michaels claims that kick. Whitefield passing the ball to the second man in the line, bringing up the defenders, trying to isolate Michaels at the back, leaving with nobody in front of him. But again, he's dealt with that. A lot of interference here now from Whitefield, trying to slow the game down. Numbers in, making it a touch sloppy and a, a lot slower. Scott Taylor back on the field after a arrest. Bowden still out there. Presumably it's Watts, Watts who is having a breather. No, he's not. There he is. <laughs> Told you. He's fresh. He only put in half a shift last week. Is this whole, de whole determined to get their money's worth? Correct. <laughs> he's had a good game, Liam Watson. As we saw and spoke about, it was very evident that he was very determined, even though he's at fault. Well, on the stage, obstruction for that last try, stage, he was in the right place. Stage all set here now for Gareth Ellis to cap off what will be uh, the end of a, a great career in front of his home supporters. He will play again after tonight, but he's going to come back on here. He's got 20 minutes to go. It's 12 all, and he can make a difference. Yeah, Ellis making his farewell appearance for Hull, so too, well, on this ground, I should say, there's more to come for Gareth Ellis, Steve Michaels likewise, Mahe Fanua, and mustn't forget Motu Tony as well, who is leaving the club, a role that Gareth Ellis is moving into, that of the, uh, the football manager. As that kick is hoisted and across comes Shaw, but it's taken from his grasp, and Wakefield have it back. But that'll be the turnover. Miller went for it. We're contesting the ball when it goes in the air. Good signs. And not just letting Jamie Shaw catch it and then let him set off down the other, the other way. And Jacob Miller chasing up that kick, making it hard for Jamie Shaw to get it. Move. Go on. So Wakefield doing as they have done on their travels this season really impressing they've had wins at Wigan at the Catalan Dragons and at St Helens along the way among their away wins so they travel well to Trinity an hour gone 12 points apiece Washbrook denied a few moments ago well they've got the completion rates right the way back up now they're matching Wakefield both of them completing at 78 percent We've got a game on here. Sneed hoists a, a high kick. Bounces back and into the hands of Hubie. Not the best of kicks. Move. Wasn't the best of kicks, but not, ball, nobody ball, really ball. taking control of that. When that ball went up in the air, Scott Griggs was looking at players around him, in front of him. Who's going to catch the ball? Nobody did that. Move, they got Josh. away with it. 
Here's Joe Arundel. And Hull FC, they brought yeah, their inspirational leads. Oh. Gareth Ellis on, well, Wakefield, they brought the hooker back on. Tyler Randall trying to speed it up round the player of all expose those big men well, they've got in two the black hookers, and white shirts. Two hookers on the field. Carl Wood stays on as well. So they've got some uh, pace out there. Here is Ashurst. Impressive season from Maddie Ashurst. Former Saints man. The kick from Miller straight into the clutches of Albert Kelly. We had a lot of joy with that last week. Both Jacob Miller, Liam Finn kicking the ball out of the field on the last play, trying to just turn the opposition round, get set defensively. You see Gareth Ellis carry the ball centre field. Here is Mahei Fanua, one of the try scorers for Hull FC tonight, one of their two try scorers. Now then, Scott Taylor. Sneed back inside from Minicello to Shaw. Shaw across the field shows it to Ellis. Still going Shaw back to this side to Connor. Connor inside to Fanua. Fanua <laughs> looks at Miller and says, Come on, they never another go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then it. gets the pass away. The referees <laughs> said he called held. And Jacob Miller looked at Mahe Fanua and, and said, well, Why haven't you moved? Fanua <laughs> plays the ball nonchalantly. Ellis straightens things up, that's the fifth tackle. Ellis, this is 97th hole appearance. As that kick is hoisted and Gricks claims it is brought down by Connor. The referee's gonna talk to his touch judge. Somebody was taken out. I don't know whether it's the kicker that was taken out. Okay, we'll deal with the injury. And then we'll deal with it, yeah. It's a hefty challenge. We're just going to deal with the injury. Late contact on Albert Kelly was the call. I'm just going to check with the injury. Yeah. Have you checked him, mate? Is that late? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think yeah. he's committed to that tackle. I didn't think he? it was late, it was, it was hard. He's committed to that There's tackle. There's nothing wrong with that. They're going to get the yeah. penalty. There was more chance of a, a shoulder charge from Jacob Miller and Maya yes. Fanua about a minute before that. Was that I think that's yeah. the reason why Fanua stopped. So, so the ball bounced over here. Check on here. Yep. Yeah. It is a penalty for Hull. Challenge on the kicker. He's touching the kicker. He's the ball bounced. No, that was you. It was a challenge on the kicker. No, what was wrong with the challenge, the challenge on the, the kicker? Well, I don't think it was. The touches called yeah. a late challenge on the kicker. And live speed, Bill, that's what the touches just called. I, I think, you know, if that's what he thinks live, we've, we've seen this a few times. It's in slow motion. It looks different, doesn't but it? But in the first half, when Wakefield had a couple of penalties go against them, you can remember, it says you talked about Jacob Miller losing his cool just for a moment or two, lost his focus. Wakefield can't afford to do the same thing. Looks like Mark Sneed will cool the situation down and try and take two points. Arona bemused by that decision. But it's an opportunity for Hull to go in front. You'd back him to kick this, wouldn't you, Mark Sneed? Well, if Finn's got an 82% success rate, Sneed 87% success yep. rate. But he misses most when he's within 10 meters of the right touch line or the left one. You're These are the hardest kicks. These are the hardest kicks. It's all right saying I understand that. I look at those numbers a lot, but this is a very difficult kick, and you can add a little bit of pressure on top of it. You are picky. I, I think it's about eight meters actually, Phil. It's within this 10 meter zone here, from 10 meters to the, the touch line there. This to put Hull in front for the first time tonight against this stubborn Wakefield side. Sneed round the corner and misses. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a difficult kick, and I don't think any of us can take into the fact that what pressure does to people look. Okay, I don't, is he happy or sad? That's his happy face, <laughs> that. Radford, Lee Radford, pretty composed about it all, outwardly at least. Well, they didn't deserve to concede two points now, so we're still all squirt. The game's in the balance. It's just over 
14 minutes to go in this, and it's anybody's. Gareth Ellis, that familiar doubled up running style, legs pumping. He will be missed. He'll be taking on an administrative role and is bound to have a big impact in that context for Hull. Here's Twim of Arve. We're saying he's on 97 appearances. If Hull can go all the way to the grand final, it'll be 100 Hull appearances for this man, Gareth Ellis. Great line from Ellis, great line. Here is Kelly. Hull just upping the pressure. Connor. Hull fans reckon Miller took him high. Connor gets on with it. Mel the kick from Mel Kelly. Ben Jones Bishop, as he has been all night. Solid underneath that. Again, trying to get down as quick as possible. Because he is that big, it's going to take him longer, obviously, to get to ground. That Minichello trying ever so hard. But a couple of nice, straight carries from Hull FC. Very committed, very direct. Again, just knocking Wakefield backwards. Come on, Josh. The outside backs now for Wakefield. Oh. Mason Caton Brown Move. trying not to be Go dominated. On, Craig Hooby, some of the bigger fellas lending their weight in the middle. Ooh, a risky offload, but he get away with it. Here is a rundle. Sneed gets a hold of him. Go. With ben Jones Bishop and uh, Finn kicks deep. It's a good kick into open space between Shaw and Mahe Fanua and Shaw has to run it back and look at the reception from Tyler Randall and Tinerawa Rona. Bill kicks like that are game breakers. When you need to find the space, you need to let get the ball on the ground, let it bounce back to the opposition's try line. But it's what you do in this next set defensively. Josh Barnum with a strong carry. And Kyle Wood dealing with him. Here is Ellis now. Ellis straightening things up, but Matty Ashurst there to make the tackle. Matty Ashurst being spoken of as uh, an England bolter, maybe. Oh, that was wow. ferocious on Kelly, and somebody is hurt in that. It's Tyler Randall, I think. And is it that same injury that he had in the first half? Oh, he didn't miss then, Tyler Randall. He's playing on one leg, isn't he? Yeah, look at that. Drops the shoulder, yeah, he just slipped, actually. I think he did miss, Tess. Well, he body-checked him. 12 all the score. Is it going to end as a draw, a point apiece? What would that mean for the uh, the table? Well, you'd be guessing that somebody would try a few drop goals. He is, as, the, uh, as it stands at present. Hull would go third. Wigan remain fourth. Wakefield would drop down to fifth. Saints, of course, still in the reckoning. So many permutations, and uh, that makes next weekend's games so important. Salford against St Helens next Thursday, 7.30 Sky Sports Arena. And then uh, Friday, Castleford against Hull FC, that's on Arena again, 7.30. And Wakefield against Wigan, oh, that kick is ricocheted, and Hull will get it back, Wakefield Wigan on Saturday. But they're not done here, Scott Taylor has lost the ball, referee's going to bring him back, is he? Oh, what a clanger from Ben Jones Bishop. They weren't within 10. They weren't within 10. They weren't within 10. Danny Kerman protesting. And they're saying the, uh, the whole chasers were in, in front of the kicker and within 10 when Ben Jones Bishop lost the ball. Well, it's a deep pass to the kicker, Mark Sneed. And I was only thinking when Ben Jones Bishop caught the one on his own line, it's going to have to be a spectacular kick to catch him out. Well, that was too far in front of him for him to go. He sticks a leg out, trying to trap the ball. Always dangerous. Oh, Baz, do you not reckon, though, if he, he slows his run down to get his foot to it, if he not takes a, an extra step towards it, he catches the ball. He just can't let this rugby league ball bounce. Tyler Randall is out of the game. Well, that'll be a big loss if he's not on. The speed that he's got around the rook defensively is so strong. I'm sure Chris Chester will be hoping there's no serious injury there for him. He's been such a big uh, success since he joined the club for the Newcastle Knights, Tyler Randall. Just his third game, but already making an impression. So Hull's head and feeds about 30 metres out. Big platform for them. Here is Twim of Ave. 
Randall off, as you can see. Here is Scott Taylor. Two! Hubie with the tackle. Houghton. Sneed now. Sneed. The ball finds uh, Steve Michaels. It's touched. It's six to go, says referee Phil Bentham. This is a great opportunity for Hull. Twimavave gets the pass away to Minicello. Minicello aiming for the line. Oh, they did well to recover when that ball was offloaded. There was three men in the tackle. Can they hold them out? Houghton. Sneed now. Sneed. Ellis. Washbrook denied once. Denied again. He's tackled about five metres out. Plenty of tackles left. Ellis for glory! What a way to finish at the take-off stadium for Gareth Ellis. The try that could break Wakefield's hearts here tonight. And it had to come from Gareth Ellis on his farewell appearance on his home ground. Chris Chester demanding more from his side. But Gareth Ellis, cometh the hour, cometh the man. Well, the pressure comes from this long kick here. Ben Jones Bishop makes a play for it with his foot, goes to regather it, actually misses the ball. He doesn't knock the ball on, but the ball goes to the scrum. It goes to Hull FC. Six to go here, when the ball shifted from one side to the other. And then all of a sudden, well, Clarky called for it before. He told us that Mark Sneed was going to miss with his conversion. He says that Gareth Ellis is going to score. Could be the match-winning try. This could be it, Phil. Well, what we don't know is what response we're going to get from the Trinity side. We're standing here now and waiting and watching as Mark Sneed lines up this kick. They've got a great 10 minutes left in them. Danny Kerman's still remonstrating with the referee. I think, uh, if anything, that's just a distraction here. They need to focus on what they can do in the remaining seconds of the left in this game that could keep their season alive. As you can see, Gareth Ellis made that Super League debut 18 years ago. He got a try in the 24-60 home defeat by Wigan, September 1999 it was. 18 years ago, this weekend... Gareth Ellis going strong right to the end. Will that end come at Old Trafford? Sneed then. He missed from just about this angle and distance. No mistake this time. Tyler Randall hobbling off. Let's check on his condition with Angela. You can see his foot there wrapped in ice. He's not going to play any further part in this game, Bill. He rolled his ankle on the pitch, and as he came off, he held his head in his hands. And he's been doing that on the bench as well. And, and just a word from half-time, Chris Chester did say that he was happy with the way the game was going, but uh, he's been in that position. The team's been in that position before where they've been ahead and lost it. He doesn't want that to happen. He's hoping he can turn it around now and put that on to Hull rather than on this team. Yeah, they suffered it against Saints last week. Can they turn the tables? Well, sometimes it's about taking the emotion out of their game and the consequence of not getting things right. And sometimes coaches need and use tuning players into the emotion. Now, Gareth Ellis, who's carrying the ball up here, this is his last, potentially his last visit to the KCOM Stadium. He's one of the most respected players of his generation on either side of the hemisphere. And the players in the black and white shirt... They want to send him out on his shield. Hull ahead for the first time tonight. 18-12 the scoreline. Can Wakefield find a way back? The kick sits up nicely for Grix. And then Grix is closed down by Twimavave quickly. Have Wakefield got the energy? Have they got it in the tank here tonight? Well, if they can get to the other end of the field, they've got a special player who's just going to come on back onto the field here for his last effort. Number 20 on his back, David Fafita. Close to the line, we've seen what he can do. But I suppose field position now is the key. Have they got a 40-20? Or have they got a, a, a way of breaking through what's going to be a very determined hull defence? Here is Fafita again. Poor old Albert Kelly. Fafita making a beeline and leaving Kelly on the deck. And here's Fafita again. And Fafita gets the pass away. Miller knocks it on. 
it was Kyle Wood, I beg your pardon, and Wood protests. Well, they're playing catch up, aren't they? That man that Phil was talking about, two touches in this set of six. Both of those touches, he was leaving players in a Hull FC jersey on the ground, offloads the ball to his teammate. Yeah, and just a little bobble. He touches it with his right hand, he tries to scoop it up with his right into his left. And yeah, the correct decision from the referee, Phil Bentham, who was on the spot. And this part of the game as well, time running out. They've got to attack through the defence now. You think if you're a whole player now, and you're particularly Mark Sneed, if we get close here at the end of the set, the drop goal one point is probably the best option for them, isn't it? We've seen how good he is at kicking under pressure. Well, I've just got to just got to hand it to you because that will happen that is bound to happen now well it's the the low risk players you know where you are on the field you know where that marks need what his best striking distance will be again he's just sitting behind his teammates he's directing scott taylor here waving his arms he knows exactly what he wants marks need he wants his teammates to react connor felt that tackle here is ellis and the hole They've got Watson Taylor lined up for action and they drive it towards those posts. That's what they're working towards. Sneed just behind them, directing operations. Taylor now. Sneed, he's like a he's like a quarterback. He's called for that ball. He's called for the one point. He's got it. But it's so easy when you're forward, when you've got a half out like that. Who's sitting behind you? Sometimes he he tugs your jersey. He points you in the direction that he wants you to go. He pointed to to Watts. He said, "I want you to go there." He picked up Carl Ward. A couple of quick play the balls. That was the time where that man steps up to kick the ball. Well, Americans use another term. They use clutch players and clutch players. And Marks he steps up, gives everybody the signal that that's what he's doing, and executes it perfectly. Another commanding performance from Mark Sneed. Well, Wakefield went short, they got the ball back here. Knowing that they need possession, just 40 metres out. But Wakefield are going to have to come up with something spectacular in the last five minutes here. Ben Jones Bishop and Ben Jones Bishop breaking through. Holes, hearts in their mouths now. Chris Chester anxious. Can his side come up with a dramatic finish they were on the receiving end last week against St Helens can they turn the tables it's with Miller Miller wrestled to the ground appealing for a penalty and gets one Chester on his feet well I'll be looking for Fafita here the Fita or Tupu, they are two game breakers. Move, Scott! What could Miller and Finn oh, organise? There he goes, flashes across the short side. For Fita, hands off one, hands off two. Washbrook in his way. Almost there for Fita. He's just short of the try line. And who was it stopping him in there? Ellis was underneath him. Finn now. Finn pumps the pass. Oh, out of the line they come. A rundle, a rundle is bundled into touch, is he? His elbow is on the line. What great defence. And Sneed was across there. A well, nice commitment. Tackle complete. Push. From Hull FC. Oh, it did look like the tackle was complete. I agree here now with the referee. Took a while to get there. The tackle's complete there. That's the second effort That's to push up. him over the sideline. The clock stopped. We've got just over three to go. And they're trying everything here now, they're swinging back to the left. So they come to the other side of the field. Tupu, out wide to Mason, Kate Brown, and Kate Brown into the corner. Wakefield are still in this game. Finn is all ready to go for goal. The most difficult possible conversion for Liam Finn. He hit the post agonizingly against St Helens last week with a crucial kick he's not taking any time with this he's got it teed up if he can land this we are in for a grandstand finish Finn from out wide he's made it well we're on <laughs> can you get a better finish than this
just over two to go, one point in it. Here's the penalty, which was eventually given, was it? The tackle completed, and Steed then pushed him over the sideline. They moved the ball then from the right side of the field all the way over to the left, and we've said all night and all season what skillful wingermen that Wakefield have. But he's given a chance to Mason Caterborough, he made no mistake, the kick came over, but they've transferred it from one side to the other now. They've all got back in position, Wakefield, they're excited here now, but just what could be possible? After this try and conversion, they've got nothing to lose now. That was a nice pass from Tupu, he was under so much pressure from Mahe Panuba. Well, this has gone deep now. 19-18, the scoreline, with two minutes to go. And Wakefield desperately hoping that they can somehow get within range. Lee Radford anxiously watching. Can his side restrict Trinity's progress in the last couple of minutes here? The whole supporters trying to lift their side to a big defensive effort. Wakefield. Ben Jones Bishop, Sneed is there to stop his progress. We're looking for some of the big guns here. Get this ball forward. Looking for the half break. They go to the other flank. It's with Kyle Wood. Wood eventually brought down. Play on, says the referee. Not for long. Liam Watts comes across and flattens him. Need to get this ball to the centre of the field with a quick play of the ball as well. Is, is a drop goal option any good to them? Yes. Gets the centre field, played his Liam ball Finn. Finn. Where's Liam Finn? He's out the back. Finn is about 40 metres out. He's got to go for it. It ricochets. Played out, says the referee. It's zero. They've got six to go. They'll get back to centre field again. Eh? Will they go for the for the try or just go for the one point to level it up? Tupu into the final minute. They're going for one. I think they're working it to but for Peter has got other ideas maybe. Kyle Wood. Here's Finn. Finn stepping. England almost to the line. Just short. Now what are they going? Finn is standing back. Wood back to Finn. Finn goes for it. And Finn has missed. Has he? The referee wasn't sure. Ben. I've got a successful referee. drop goal. I need to check it, please. They've done ever so well to I'm get themselves in this position, oh, haven't they? Drama, this is brilliant. Phil Bentham thinks this was successful. He wasn't sure. Well, he needs a video referee to confirm that it, it wasn't for it to be... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Liam Wynn, oh, so close has missed by inches. And Bill, he misses this goal. Look at Mark Minicello. Well, gets off his line. Puts him under pressure. Little efforts in games will win you. Those big fixtures, now this was a big fixture. Next is zero. Valuable two points that could be going for FC's way. Next the final zero, 12 eight. seconds. Ready? What drama at the KCOM Stadium. Agony, agony for Wakefield. So close to snatching a point. Well, help the Hooter sounds. 19-18, the final score. Hull FC get the crucial win. Wakefield.